Yes, hello everyone. So this is Frederick uh, Gomer from B2G Consulting. I'm uh, extremely pleased to have today Jean-François Moulin. So Jean-François is uh, in charge of the global uh, supply chain transformation at uh, L'Oréal. Um, and he's going to walk first, uh, us through the transformation journey, this massive transformation journey that uh, he led uh, and still leading, in fact, uh, at uh, uh, at L'Oréal here. Uh, what I'm going to do before we start is to remind you a bit of the timeline. We're going to have 45 minutes of presentation, and this is going to be an interactive uh, discussion between uh, myself and uh, Jean-Francois. And also, we are going to have, at the end, 15 minutes for the Q&A session. So you may uh, go on the Q&A um, panel on your screen and type your questions and I will select the uh, the toughest questions, uh, the silliest question for Jean-Francois and uh, Jean-Francois will answer. So let's start. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, Jean-Francois, who are you? So good. Uh, well, hi, everyone. It's not uh, specifically the morning. It's morning for us, but uh, OK, not for everyone. Uh, so I'm Jean-Francois Moulin. I'm currently in charge of um, global um, supply chain uh, transformation at, uh, at L'Oréal. Uh, I've been with uh, L'Oréal Group for uh, now 28 years. Uh, I'm not a pure supply chain animal. I started in finance and sales at the beginning of my career. So I stay, uh, in particular, I, I stayed uh, seven years in, uh, in finance before moving uh, to, to supply chain where I did pretty much uh, everything in supply chain. Um, uh, supply planning, uh, customer care, uh, warehouse manager, and so on. Uh, I did it in France, in uh, in the UK, in Mexico, and then uh, in Brazil, where I was uh, at the end of my uh, stay in uh, Latin America. I was in charge of uh, the global supply chain for uh, for Latin America for L'Oréal, and then I came back to France, where I took some uh, global positions for uh, to to lead the supply chain of uh, active cosmetics products and professional products division. Uh, so the products that are dedicated to um, the pharmacist and the hair salon. And then uh, one year and a half ago, I was appointed as a global supply chain uh, transformation officer. And this is uh, on this behalf that uh, I'm here today with you. Perfect. Thanks for this uh, introduction, Jean-François. Uh, we can uh, definitely tell that you have a various uh, background and experience. Uh, it would be good to uh, to learn a little bit more uh, about it during this presentation. Mm -hmm. So um, we all know about L'Oréal, definitely. That's one of the global, um, I say one, in fact, that's the leading cosmetics organization in the world, in mm -hmm. fact. So we know about the company. We don't really know about the, the supply chain mm -hmm. of L'Oréal, uh, the context, the challenges. So I would be good if you can give us uh, a quick overview of how the L'Oréal supply chain uh, look like. OK. So maybe to start with, I'm going to, uh, to share a little bit about the, the, the group. So uh, today we are going to to go through the, the transformation journey for the supply chain, but just a few words about, about the group. Uh, the mission of, uh, of L'Oréal uh, is encapsulated in this, uh, in this sentence, a beauty for all, uh, with the strategy of universalization, meaning that we have to offer and want to offer the best of beauty to all types of consumers around the world uh, and to adapt also to uh, the necessities of the, of the zones and different, different types of hair, different types of skins and, and, and necessities of the consumer. So that's the, the, the global vision, which is very important also for us uh, in, in, in supply chain. In terms of uh, leadership and positioning of L'Oréal, as you said before, uh, we are the number one company uh, when it comes to cosmetics and uh, no, number one beauty company. So you see uh, some of the of the of the ranking with the, the market uh, with the with the sales in billion, um, uh, and we are. Uh, based upon uh, an offer, a wide range of, uh, of brands, uh, of global brands. And more than ever, we, we believe that the brands is uh, what, is, what uh, drives the, the, the growth of the company. Uh, 
uh, we are used to uh, turn uh, the brands into global brands. Uh, first, we can acquire a brand in a local market, and then we uh, we, we we expand the brands. Uh, we uh, we had an acquisition uh, pace that is quite uh, quite high. Uh, we've got, uh, and that's a challenge for supply chain uh, to have a new acquisition. Uh, on, well, you know, on, at least there are two or three acquisitions, maybe on a yearly basis, uh, or at least it was the case for the the, the few years. And then uh, one of the challenges for supply chain is to integrate and to make sure that the brands we are going to integrate nicely in our uh, supply and our portfolio of operations. Uh, with regards to if you if you combine the brands with the, the channels, in fact, we are present in all types of distribution channels as well. Okay, so which also is very important for the for the go to market and for the supply chain, because we are present in uh, okay the mass type of um, of channel, but we are also in department stores. So for the for for luxury, uh, the counters. Uh, the, the pharmacies, as I said before, the salons, so all those brands, all the, 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 the possibilities to, uh, to find our brands uh, are uh, encapsulated in the, uh, in the different access to market or uh, different uh, channels. And we've got now the direct to consumer also channel, uh, meaning that uh, the we, e the e-commerce, yeah. so direct e-commerce, and indirect e-commerce as well, with a pure beauty or the, the e-commerce giant you can think of, or uh, e-commerce um, pure players, uh, beauty pure players, and uh, we, we, you, we, you, are, you have some different actors on different markets. Uh, and we have also freestanding stores, meaning that we operate retail as well directly for ourselves, mostly with the brands um, Kiehl's and uh, Nix, okay, for makeup. Okay. Which is, uh, in fact, a big challenge. In fact, we have uh, so many channels, channels uh, around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different expectations, uh, different, I uh, would say, uh, universe at Royal L'Oréal because the brand has also uh, uh, its own identity. Uh, so I guess in terms of uh, supply chain, and this is probably what we're going to see later mm -hmm. on, uh, brings uh, also its uh, plate of, uh, of challenges and, uh, and uh, also um, difficulties. Yeah, so we have to animate, and that's the challenge of the supply chain for L'Oréal. So, in terms of business, we 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 believe that uh, being present in all those distribution channels and there are specific brands that were designed for those channels is going is is very important for the growth. Uh, because uh, one year at the moment, for example, luxury brands are booming, in particular in Asia, whereas uh, consumer division is a bit different. It's uh, it's more. Uh, sluggish, uh, uh, in particular in, uh, in the US. But it, for us, it's very important to be present in all these type of channels to compensate uh, when one goes uh, uh, well, the other one uh, compensating the, the ones that are not going that well. So it's very important for supply chain. It needs some, uh, some flexibility to be able to operate uh, in a different, uh, in our distribution centers, in our transportation network. Uh, diff to operate those different channels. What also is making the situation even more complex today is the fact that, in fact, the consumer does not really care about the way we are organized. More than ever, they want to find our product anywhere, anytime. And actually, uh, the the old organization or the legacy organization uh, with uh, all distribution channels now is kind of blurred with the fact that all brands can be accessible potentially on e-commerce or accessible uh, in uh, all types of channel. Now we, 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 you, you, you can find, uh, you know, what used to be a salon brand, such as Kerastase, you can find it now in, uh, even in department stores or in, in uh, some uh, luxury uh, kind of uh, outlets. So it's, everything is, is more, much more blurred, which makes the move and the transformation towards an omni-channel strategy more than ever necessary. I think, uh, Jean-François, the co consumer never really cares, in fact, about the uh, how the, the supply chain was structured. Mm -hmm. uh, brands used to hold, in fact, the access. They would say, okay, this brand should be available only mm -hmm. in this type of uh, channel or salon or boutique. Uh, now, the consumer somehow wants it available. So, um, brands have to face the, the, yeah. the this new uh, change mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, open the, the different doors, the different channels. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, just to complete on, uh, on, on the journey for L'Oréal, uh, I'm mentioning here the fact that uh, 
because uh, we uh, we believe that now what is going to matter the most is the experience of the service we provide on top of the of the brands yeah. of the products then uh, we are engaged in a in a, in a, in a new uh, new transformation journey as far as the business is concerned it's very important for supply as well is the fact that we want to be the leader of what we call beauty tech so it's a Yes, of course, we've got the products. We've got uh, okay, our products that are high quality products, yeah. but we know that more and more services around the product are going to make the difference. And supply chain plays its part, and data management in particular plays its part as well. And what I wanted to mention also, uh, which is very important for supply chain transformation, is the fact that we are very ambitious in terms of sustainability. Okay, and then uh, we uh, are recognized as a sustainable company. Uh, we've been awarded uh, some uh, specific prizes for that, uh, for our efforts in this matter. Uh, we were very focused on sustainability on, on, on products in particular. Each time we launch a new product, uh, we want to have a beneficial or positive impact on the environment. Uh, we, uh, on, the, on the supply chain, we, we, we want to go uh, as well in this direction more than ever. Obviously, monitoring very closely uh, waste uh, monitoring co2 management and so and so on uh, and we want to accelerate in this uh, in this okay. so it's also part of the of the transformation journey which is fully in tune with the ambition of of l'oréal okay uh, so specifically about about transformation as i mentioned before and uh, the fact that the, the the consumer wants now uh, Anything, any, anywhere, anytime is a uh, is a new uh, well is, a, is something that is very common to say yeah. uh, nowadays. But it's a fact. But it's and a fact. fact. And nevertheless, we experience it uh, really uh, in, uh, in at L'Oréal. We experience it in supply chain. It's driven by all the changes and transformation that uh, you know by heart, uh, all of us. Uh, technology, digital, and uh, the, the quest for new consumer experience, and of course, as I said before, also the system sustainability uh, uh, paradigm, which is very important for supply as well, not only for the objective that we mentioned before, but also the, for the fact that the consumer expect uh, transparency on uh, the components, the data, and in particular when it comes to e-com and so on. So we have also to strengthen uh, or uh, global data management, uh, like uh, in any in any company. So, in terms of consumer behavior, it has a direct impact on on supply. It is. Uh, I'm not going to comment uh, everything here, but it's really uh, having in mind the anything, anywhere, anytime. The personalization move as well, which is going to change very much the way we uh, conceive supply chain. I was mentioning beauty tech before, meaning that more or more we will have to be able to provide personalized services and personalized beauty, meaning that. At some point, and we've got already some uh, tests uh, about it, uh, uh, providing personalized formula okay. for the for the product. So, for example, uh, makeup that are specified, uh, that are specific for uh, the, the the tone of your skin, and so on. So, it's very uh, we we are getting there, and it has a drastic impact on supply chain as well. Yeah. Okay, so we have to to invent the supply chain of this type of new services. And then I was mentioning the quest for transparency that the consumer wants okay which in terms of shift and transformation for l'oréal it's uh, moving from a purely or for a inherited and legacy product focus let's say uh, there is products, a product yeah. product yeah product performance and product centricity yeah. we have to complement it uh, of course, we still have to be the leaders in terms of product uh, quality and, and performance, but also we have to complement it with the experience we can offer to our consumers through uh, this uh, customer and consumer centricity uh, we want to, to, to push forward. So what does it mean in terms of uh, supply chain? Because in the end, uh, I see uh, a lot of companies extremely good, uh, mainly the industrial uh, uh, companies, mm -hmm. uh, very focused on uh, engineering, making sure that the products, R&D, the products are great. But in the end, they are somehow lacking of, uh, of something. And this something is typically uh, what is beyond the, the, the product. And consumer now, they, they are looking, I would say, I wouldn't say that every products are equal, but somehow it's by default. If companies are still there today, 
that means they are relevant in terms of product quality somehow. So it's not the fight or the battle is not anymore on the, the product's quality. It's uh, mm -hmm. much more on uh, what is beyond, which is what you, you've just mentioned, the customer experience. And the customer experience uh, happens to uh, be uh, somehow delivered by uh, a large percentage by the supply chain, mm -hmm. typically. So how does it uh, impact? So it's not only supply, supply but yeah. it's uh, yeah, because but, it's a mix of exactly. the company globally. Yeah? Yeah. But the supply chain uh, has to be uh, uh, very much uh, at the forefront of, uh, of this uh, understanding of the customer. And this is also what we convey through this chart, meaning that now through the consumer and customer centricity, because we've got a lot of our business, uh, we, we get access direct to our consumers through direct e-commerce and freestanding stores, but the vast majority of our business today, more than 90%, is still with through, through, wholesale, uh, through wholesale distributors, uh, distributors yeah. and so on. So when we work with those guys, we have also to understand their own journey to serving better the consumer. So this is the consumer and customer centricity that matters the most, and uh, which is going to drive us to, towards new uh, consumer experience. In fact, your complexity mm -hmm. is dual because you have the customer uh, which are in fact uh, the wholesalers, the distributors, mm -hmm. and also the consumers, uh, the end customer yeah. in the end. And this is really the idea yeah. of uh, convening, convening this idea for this chart. Is really we we more than ever we have to understand both. We have to then to be excellent in supply chain to serve direct or consumers when it comes to D 2 C, and you'll see in the program that we put together that it's a mm -hmm. it's a big pillar of the transformation. But we have also and and. And first and foremost, and just to understand the way uh, we uh, we co we collaborate and the way uh, wh what are the necessities uh, of the B two B customers, okay. okay, in order to serve better their uh, their own consumers. So, and what we also insisted on is the fact that all of that has to be powered and uh, activated uh, through agility, yeah. okay. Uh, more than ever, it's also it's a kind of buzzword. But uh, more than ever, if you are not able to react to uh, some somehow a contradictory request from the customers uh, or from the consumers, then uh, you have to be able to 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 uh, to you have to equip your supply chain with the ability to react quickly. Just uh, for some examples, is the fact that uh, your supply chain or supply chain more than ever is highly volatile. In particular, for some categories such as makeup, I would take the example of. Uh, uh, one influencer uh, having a big importance uh, or big impact on the sales or, or one uh, SKU uh, on on lips that were not uh, initially that uh, booming. Well, just one post of an influencer can have a well, big impact on your on your sales. Then you have you, you have to have the flexibility yeah. and the reactivity when it comes to makeup and uh, and skincare in particular. You have this sort of phenomenon, and which is brand new. So for the supply chain, what does that mean? You have to be able to capture that. Yeah. Uh, you have to capture the early signs of uh, such booming sales uh, and factor that in your uh, forecasting and supply process. Okay, so that's yeah. the that's a big, big chunk of the transformation. Did you manage to forecast this through your SNOP, the influencers impact? Well, that's a part of the of the journey through uh, the demand sensing sort of project that we have today. Uh, but you have to do that in the right order, meaning that you have to ensure that the 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 data, the basic data, so the sell in and sell out data, you can really uh, have it. Uh, solid and 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 uh, this is this data that is going to be used first to do the, 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 the forecasting in an automatic fashion but then after that you are able to put uh, more and more uh, factors such as influencers bloggers uh, uh, ratings and reviews on, uh, on social networks it can be also forecast uh, weather forecast and so on so really uh, we have to do that uh, step by step but that's yes, that's one of the of the purposes of the journey. Okay, just I was taking the example, other example of the impact on supply. I was mentioning the fact that e-commerce is booming. Yes, when I mention 11% uh, of global sales for L'Oréal, in fact, it's combining e-commerce through direct uh, e-com and, and indirect as well. Okay, so for the direct, it's uh, it's less than the indirect uh, today. It's a choice or it's a fact. The 11%. It's, uh, it's 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 it is the fact that uh, now the the 
purchasing behavior, the, be the buying behavior for, for you as well as, a, as individual, we know that, that we are going through more and more uh, e e-com. So it's the, it's a tidal wave. It's not, it's, I think it's, a, it's the way it is, but it's very different paces dif depending on the countries. Okay. So there is a tsunami, uh, a digital tsunami in China. There is no doubt about that. And uh, in, in uh, East Asia in general, whereas, for example, in some other in some other zones, such as Latin America, for example, it goes at a much uh, slower okay. pace. Okay, and then in between, you have uh, Europe, for example, but it depends on the countries. The UK is more advanced in terms of uh, of ecom, and then it's more uh, it's slower in some other countries. So we have to be able to adapt to those different backgrounds. Okay, and the combination between uh, direct and indirect is very different, diverse from one country to another. That's a challenge for some patients as well. I see the 11-11 singles day uh, in China. <laughs> yeah, so it it's illustrates perfectly well the challenge for supply because we have uh, millions of cases to uh, to prepare and to pick and pack in one week, huh, basically, uh, and to be able to uh, uh, to serve in a, in a few hours uh, in uh, all different uh, parts of uh, of China. Uh, so it means that we need uh, advanced uh, inventory and more, well, more than uh, more than ever, we need to collaborate very much with all the, the supply chain networks, including the third party uh, providers, transport uh, carriers or, or, or DC. So this is this uh, network uh, ability to, uh, to, to, to monitor a network that is quite new also in the supply chain today and that we, we are facing through this experience of, uh, of China okay. in particular. Okay, so we, we said, okay, we need to speed up because the consumer is spinning, is, uh, the, 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 is changing rapidly. Uh, but first, what is the, the, the global vision that we, we carry as a supply chain? Because in fact, of course, the transformation is just something that you decide from one day to another. You don't say, okay, uh, uh, I'm, I, I decide to transform, uh, yes, and then let's go for it. No, I mean, we had lots of projects already on, on the way. Uh, lots of tools being used, uh, global projects, local projects, mini initiatives all over the, 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 the board. The thing is, uh, all those initiatives, they need to make sense for, uh, for the people, uh, for everyone in the company. And this is probably what also uh, triggered the necessity to have a common transformation program, because sometimes you are kind of uh, embroiled in the day-to-day -day stuff of uh, project deployment. Uh, it could be a APO uh, sort of, a, you know, a planning tool or, or uh, a new uh, forecasting process or new forecasting tool, but in fact, the people need to understand very well where, where you want to get to uh, and not being too expert and too technical. So the common vision is the first thing that we work on. Uh, just few words, because I've got no slide about the supply chain at L'Oréal, but just few in few words, uh, we've got 40, 41 factories globally. Okay, globally. Uh, of which uh, uh, the, the kind of selective division factories are mostly based in France or in Europe, okay, because this is the made it impact for uh, the, the luxury brands in particular. And then for the consumer products division, we are more localized uh, in order to adapt quickly and to drive the cost down in order to offer the best price to the consumers. So you have this, uh, this, uh, this setup and it's mostly, uh, well, all our factories are operated in-house, okay, so we've got a, a bit of a... Uh, or three PL or third party uh, manufacturing, but mostly uh, contract manufacturing. Mostly, it's a uh, vast majority is, the, is done in house. Um, and then we've got uh, 150 uh, distribution centers. Okay, part of them, so 50% of them are in house, and 50% of them are outsourced. Uh, and uh, and those distribution centers, uh, they are mostly driven by the local market. Okay, so we want to be as close as possible to uh, to the local markets, and they are very often they are they are combining the B 2 B and the B 2 C. Yes. Okay, so we tend to lean on the B 2 B expertise that we got or we acquired over the years to serve the small B, huh, the small so pharmacists, institutes, small perfumeries, small pharmacists and so, small salon. Uh, and then we were able to build upon this capability to also start uh, delivering the direct to consumer. But it's not, you know, it's not a global fact. Sometimes we also have uh, external uh, external uh, pick and pack for D2C. 
All right. So we wanted to 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 build this common vision and to to uh, sorry. How many people in this supply chain globally, worldwide? Uh, globally, it's seven thousand, okay. seven or eight thousand people. Just to give an idea, just, so that's just, quite just huge. Possible. Okay. So, um, so so that's why it's very important to convey the vision and to embark everyone. Okay. And this is what we worked on first. So the vision, I mentioned it before, is this concept of beautiful, which is, uh, you understood, this is the global, this is the mission for L'Oréal. Uh, very focused on products. But I say that it's going to be augmented by beauty tech capabilities. And the anytime, anywhere conveys this idea of distributing or giving a, a very easy access to Uh, to our product uh, through uh, digital, uh, through uh, omnichannel approach and a very uh, consumer-centric approach. This uh, combination of the two uh, encapsulates this, uh, this vision of, uh, of, uh, of uh, transformation, uh, supply chain transformation. Then we put together a program, okay, uh, from this beauty for all in time anywhere, where we want to get to. So in the inner circle, you have this, uh, the objectives. I'm not going to detail them uh, All of them, but you see that uh, fit to consumer expectation, flexibility, the concept of end to end, because in our all kind of uh, old companies, sometimes we are tend to be siloed. So the end to end vision is very important. The fact that we want to move to data driven culture, and it's very important also the, to convey this idea that uh, data quality is is uh, is massive, is 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 very important in this journey and the sustainability okay so we've got the kpi you want to focus on and then on the right hand side of the screen you have the uh, the strategy associated with all those objectives so how we want to get there okay so we say that uh, we have to uh, revamp our supply chain uh, operating model the traditional one so uh, you see this concept of uh, supply chain segmentation and then we have what we call the transformation pillars and uh, the one that are focused on consumer customer care the d2c excellence so direct to consumer how to operate direct e and, and and retail uh, in an excellent fashion the omnichannel network design i mentioned it a bit uh, to operate omnichannel to convert or inventory uh, locations into uh, uh, entities uh, capable to serve all types of, uh, of customers. Smart data, demand-driven SNOP. Uh, so it's not big data, it's smart data. Yes, because uh, big data is a sort of prerequisite, but what will make a difference is the fact that the data is going to help us or is going to be at the center of a better decision-making process. And furthermore, uh, at the center of or, or is going to uh, operate itself uh, automatically some some processes. So going to be really at the, at the center of some processes, uh, such as I was mentioning before, demand sensing. So uh, if you want to put together a relevant forecasting, then data is key now more than ever. Okay, and then you can leave the time for the people to dedicate to really value added, uh, added value task and not uh, crunching a lot of numbers uh, as uh, we tend to do. Which is time consuming do, and uh, time the consuming. value added is not that high in the end. Exactly. Uh, demand driven, uh, agile end to end operations. It was a way for us to say that how we unbark the rest of operations, including manufacturing, uh, uh, purchasing, product development and so on. And then we, we, we said the enablers, uh, IT, people, and, and finance, of course. Uh, we are, uh, with also the beauty tech uh, vision, we are embarked into uh, an IT transformation as well. So uh, we have to make sure that we accompany our supply chain transformation with also uh, big IT support, meaning that uh, to operate on each channel, we have to uh, transform. Uh, the way we structure the information uh, internally. So again, a lot of things is being done, is uh, on the way, uh, but it's uh, labor intensive. It's labor yeah. intensive, and then we have to accelerate this uh, this journey. Usually, when we talk about smart data and also end to end, uh, it could be operations, but also um, uh, transparency or visibility. Uh, the IT transformation is necessary. The main, uh, I would say, um, key roadblock is the ability, the platform to have access to it. It's not 
because people don't want to provide. You may have some um, uh, silos within the organization, but in the end, if the system is not able to provide you mm. uh, with the information that you need, then you have a problem. Mm. So you need also to revisit also the uh, the layer yeah, on the, the platform. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, uh, L'Oréal is, is a company that was uh, that uh, is still a very entrepreneur company, uh, and uh, we, we we developed an IT platform, very local uh, IT platforms. Even with SAP, we had the ability to uh, let's say to to position and to locate the locally the the, the, the platforms. And uh, over the time, uh, the different uh, business practices and operation practices started to diverge a little bit. And then uh, now we've got, uh, in order to be able to decrease the number of platforms and to make data uh, more available than ever, uh, that's uh, one of the objectives. Uh, then in that case, we have to harmonize processes in order to make sure that uh, we will converge towards those uh, smaller number of, the, of, of platforms. So yes, it's part of the, it's a sort of a foundational transformation for, for, uh, for supply chain, but it's not, let's say, a prerequisite for transformation, okay? It's, uh, it's going to be an accelerator. It's an enabler. It's an enabler, okay? Meaning that the harmonization process, the data uh, uh, cleanup, uh, the, um, all the foundational work that uh, it can be done already, okay? Because you can have complexity, you can have standardization through several platforms and you can have also complexity through uh, just one platform. And the fact that we drive a simplification of our processes through this uh, transformation is also uh, something very, very important. Okay. I'm very much interested in the supply chain segmentation, which seems to be... Uh... Okay, so I will mention uh, a little bit more about the segmentation, which is probably... We position uh, in a transformation the segmentation at this level, which is uh, a way for us to, uh, to picture the fact that it's a sort of a new rules of the game with the business, because of course this transformation should be embarking the, 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 the business. Uh, meaning what? Meaning that um, uh, we, uh, I'm going to take this line. We, uh, as I said before, we used to operate, uh, we, used to, uh, we used to have brands specifically dedicated for, uh, for such a such a distribution channel, okay? And as I said before, all divisions now that were associated and developed with their channels and for which we developed also the supply chain model associated with it actually operate in all types of channels. That's why you've got now this picture. Okay. So that's why, in fact, the, the, even from a, from a business point of view, it still makes sense to have those divisions, those business units, let's say. But from a supply chain viewpoint, it's a complexity. Each time we acquire a new brand, yeah, we, we, we've got some, uh, some difficulties to say, okay, uh, let's operate uh, this. Um, make a brand uh, in the consumer division, uh, yes, but shouldn't we operate it the same way as we do operate to make a brand in another division, okay? And that's the type of question that came uh, on board. And that's why, and it's just, I'm not going to elaborate uh, on that, but just, we want to propose, and we are currently working, so it's still a work in progress, to have, okay, what uh, makes very specific the go-to market and the business expectation of the, the search or search brand category and then a customer, okay, regardless the internal organization and see if we can make some synergies, simplify the, the landscape, uh, the processes and make also more powerful some of the process that are working very well in such or such division. Okay, so we want to kind of override the, the traditional sort of silos that uh, may have an impact, that have an impact on, on, um, on, uh, on the supply chain operating model. That's a big change, in fact. Um, I guess first uh, at L'Oréal, but uh, generally speaking in the cosmetics world. Because in the end, uh, the cosmetics industry is um, structured around uh, divisions, brands, geographies, uh, somehow very localized, which is uh, against the, the, the principle of the supply chain, which is the overall optimization. So here, what you are um, uh, proposing, in fact, is to uh, somehow revolution, re revolutionize the, the, uh, the concept uh, itself of the supply chain within the cosmetic industry, uh, which is basically to, to, to define models which are um, adapted to certain dynamic, depending on the characteristic mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of each of the, of the, the brand or the, the divisions. Well, in fact, uh, I, I, I don't know if it's uh, specific to, to because uh, 
we, we took also some exam examples or inspiration from other uh, other type of industries uh, outside cosmetics. Um, but what is sure is that for us, just to, to, to take an example, uh, between uh, serving uh, selective luxury brands and uh, being focused on the execution at point of sale, is not ex not the same as serving uh, you know shampoos uh, and uh, so shampoos in in mass in in mass uh, types of distribution, okay. Meaning that in that case, what we want to do is just to operate and to have a high uh, stock or inventory turnover at the at the customer and make your operations efficient. And when you consider that, I mean it's quite logical. And everybody can understand very well, okay. So it's. Yes, we we have area we have area areas where we need to focus on the execution point of sale, the quality of the launches, the quality of the experience of the consumer, etc. And then some other areas where are more cost driven. And just doing the exercise of sharing, because in fact, in L'Oréal, as probably in many other companies, everybody wants the best of everything. Okay, cost and service and uh, and speed and so on. And the difficulty is to uh, the, uh, is to is to consider the trade off. So we want to use that as a way for the business to, de to do some trade-off and a way for supply chain to prioritize much better what we do in terms of transformation. Okay, we know, Knowing the different types of expectations the markets have, then in that case, you say, okay, this specific law will, flow will really need it. This specific system, this specific tool will really need it. Some others, they are redundant. We, we, can, we can optimize, we can get rid of it. Okay, so that's the idea, but uh, I don't want to spend... Uh, too much time uh, for 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 the rest of the pillars. Uh, we took an approach because what is important for for the transformation is not only okay. Now you understand there is the vision. We scoped everything, all the initiatives and projects within the vision. So meaning that we got out of this very uh, technical vision of the supply chain to uh, to give sense a vision, okay, and uh, link uh, a project, any project to this transformation journey and the vision. But we have we need some discipline, and we 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 developed uh, some some tools, huh? and actually we collaborated also on some of the tools there. Uh, uh, the one to frame uh, everything and to cascade. Huh? Uh, it's a matrix that we call OGSM, which is a, a objective goal strategy matrix, which allows us to really to cascade uh, the vision. I will take an example later. Uh, what we call the sun, which is a roadmap, and that allows to map. Uh, the transformation over the time because at L'Oréal we want to do everything right now uh, overnight which won't happen <laughs> yeah and we've got so many initiatives that at the end of the day uh, maybe some of them uh, naturally uh, we are not able to do it so there is shift and we have to make sure that then we put uh, the right resources for the uh, struggles we we choose okay uh, which uh, is a way to discipline also the organization uh, in the roadmap and say, no, no, we're not going to do that next year. You are going to do that the year after because the first prerequisite is to work on this uh, this year. So it's a and way then, to be more focused on and we uh, align what also, matters. Yeah. Because you align the zones and divisions having this type of, uh, of, of common vision. Uh, for example, we had a supply and demand seminar uh, just one month ago, and then all different zones and divisions from L'Oréal, from the demand and supply community, they came with their, what we call the sun, uh, they, they came with their roadmap and said, okay, there are some redundancies from one zone to another. So let's choose, let's uh, elicit which, uh, which project we are going to, to do with whom in terms of uh, who is going to be the pilot on the behalf of the group. So it's a cultural change because as we are very entrepreneurial, each zone, each division tends to do its own stuff, uh, you know, at the end. With this transformation program, we want to have this 360 view and make sure that not everyone is working on the same topic, okay? Which is uh, very healthy, but not that e easy. And then we document with uh, what we call here the web pager or dashboard, uh, okay. which is a summary. Kind of, of a summary in order to say, okay, we don't want to be too technical for yeah. everyone. And when we have a sort of summary dashboard, say, okay, where do we stand at this stage, okay? Uh, so that, that's an example of uh, OGSM uh, for the, the, the people who, who are listening to us is, uh, okay, you have the objective, you have the goals, you have the strategies, how you want to get there, okay? So not to elaborate too much. An example of, for the same pillar of the sun, so how do we position, right? it's a simplified version, uh, how do we position ourselves uh, in the, in the um, well, in this uh, transformation strategy for the demand-driven uh, SNOP pillar, 
Okay. And you see that there is a big part uh, focused on what we call fundamentals. Everything that is foundational, in particular, to use data in a much more advanced fashion, as we see demand driven, I mean, it's key and it's a key, uh, key learning for this journey. If you want to transform, you have to ensure some uh, alignment, harmonization, and data uh, in data foundation that is very strong. And uh, any digital transformation in any uh, company I discuss with is very much focused on data to make it happen. Otherwise, they you know doesn't that, uh, it's yeah, very, very you need to get your basics uh, right first. Exactly. Well, you can do things in parallel, but there is one moment if you want to scale. If you want to scale, it's just you are not going to scale if you don't have the, the, the data yeah. right. That's for sure. Just a few words are very important is your next change management. Okay, so for example, we have, we have a campaign of video that we share with the community. A number of clicks are not that bad. Huh? I was mentioning that seven thousand people that do receive this uh, this letter. So huh, we, we we want to embark, but there are other ways to manage change. Huh? For example, having a transformation program, being part of a training systematically for any trading in which area and we do a lot of internal trading, we have a transformation uh, segment. Okay. One of the difficulties we face, as I said before, we are not a startup company. We've got legacy, we've got uh, systems inherited from the, from the past. Transformation is, is very organic. You have to uh, transform what does exist. You are not going to uh, scrap everything and say, okay, let's, let's start from scratch. It's not going to happen this way. Okay, so you have to be able to uh, transform in a very steady fashion what exists, providing you have the vision. If you know where you want to get to, otherwise you can be uh, meddled, meddled around the, the, uh, the, the, the difficulty or the spaghetti of our, uh, of our information systems and solutions. And you may not be that far from your target in the end because you have built uh, a lot of strengths and capitalized on it uh, from, uh, I mean, uh, L'Oreal has been, uh, uh, I mean, a strong company. So you, you can use that to, to, to get to uh, the, where you want to be. Uh, basically, and uh, you can't necessarily uh, start as if uh, you're, you're just... Uh, yeah, because we are business. very... Yes, you're right. I mean, uh, there is a culture of, of change. Huh? We embrace the digital change in, uh, in marketing in particular for uh, many years ago. So this flexibility, this agility of uh, acquiring new brands, uh, being able to launch new products in a very constant way and so on, and to adapt to uh, new, uh, new challenges is part of the DNA of the company and the people who are part of it. So that's why it makes the, 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 the open mind and the, the, the mind quite open to change as well and some, some, some agility within the organization. And I mentioned before uh, the, the data burning platform. Uh, it's also one of the big challenges we're facing. The fact that, yes, because we used to have this very kind of uh, uh, divisional-led uh, supply or data organization, now that we are... Uh, crossing the different boundaries due to the fact that the consumer, this is what they expect, then we have to build and we've started to build uh, data platforms that are okay. uh, say, agno or, agnostic, yeah. that are not, uh, that are neutral, yeah. and that don't depend, that don't rely on internal organizations. So data lake, as you, as you said, uh, and this is where, uh, what you can see. And then when you have this, uh, data repository, then you have the ability to take external data on board as well. Okay? And just uh, because I'm conscious of time, in terms of deployment, that's uh, okay. The design, the discipline, the vision, all of that has been done. Now we are kind of accelerating uh, the deployment of, uh, of this journey. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Jean-Francois. So uh, you manage uh, uh, to respect the time. So we see that you are a great supply chain professional. <laughs> so we are going to move to the Q&A session. So I have, um, I have a first question. So among all your past experiences, which one in your opinion helps you the most to identify and act transformations? Okay. So to choose Um, well, it's, uh, well, probably it's very difficult to, to single out one of the, one of, of the experiences, which is for sure what, uh, helped me at 
uh, understanding uh, the consumer, consumer and customer centricity was the fact that uh, at some point I had some time on the field <laughs> as a sales representative, which for me is a kind of foundational. So the fact that uh, uh, when you understand the, the when you understand the customers uh, and the way uh, you do business with customers, that's I think very important. And sometimes uh, people are very in supply chain are too experts and too technical. And uh, if you want to embark uh, a wide array and and in a company like L'Oréal, if you are not able to adapt your language. To uh, what the business uh, lives on a daily basis is very complex. A lot of communication, storytelling, exactly, uh, and negotiation, then, uh, and and diplomacy, then, uh, and that's why I was head. Uh, I was head of, of a customer care team as well during three, four years, and being, you know, at some point exposed to customers, to customer requests, and to sit down with customers, to be a part of, uh, you know, to understand how they leave their point of sale, how they do receive our products. Uh, what do we expect uh, in terms of uh, information management uh, uh, through uh, paper or through uh, digital and so on? Uh, it is very foundational, and I would uh, recommend, at least this is, I believe, what makes a difference and what serves a lot uh, to me today. Is this, uh, a, a, lot, customer focus. A, a lot of organizations are talking about uh, customer centricity in terms of supply chain. Um, but I truly believe that if you have not been in a position where you are in direct contact with the, the customer, you can't really uh, sense what the customer wants, needs, uh, and, and you can't really be customer-centric without this experience. And it has to be, a, I would say, a grand experience, mm, yeah. not something which is uh, theoretical. Mm, absolutely. So we have another question. What was the single toughest aspect of this transformation? Um... I would say that uh, surprisingly enough, what is uh, probably uh, the most difficult is the fact that uh, when you have a vision, uh, you 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 can con you can consider that uh, you can consider that uh, people will stick to it. But actually, uh, it's not that easy to make the people stick to the vision that they worked on and they define themselves at some point. Meaning that uh, the discipline of people sticking to the vision and to uh, the, the strategic aspect of the transformation, the why we do it and how we will do it is something that is not that easy because there is always this sort of, uh, you know, reinventing the wheel syndrome. You want, yeah, everybody wants to reinvent at every at every time. So sometimes something I, I had to do on a very regular basis is to remind the people that they have a, they have a frame and systematically they have to repeat it to uh, their own teams uh, to their, their boss, to the business, and so on, to make understand where they are get, getting to. And um, so this is the, the discipline and also the execution and the discipline associated with that that, that is very probably the most, uh, the most difficult. And surprisingly enough, it is more with, the let's say, the manager themselves rather than the, the team, the, the, let's say, the, 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 operate, the operating people or the people who work directly on demand supply who are craving for vision. The one, the, the, the people and the whole community is very, very happy to have a frame because they understand where they're coming from. Where there are conflicts sometimes of alignment is more with the intermediary, uh, you know, uh, management people who are conflicted, who have sometimes conflicted bosses, huh, matricial organization, and then uh, difficulties to uh, say, okay, but which frame I should refer to, uh, which objective I should uh, uh, favor, and so on. So that's one of the big challenges we're facing today. It might be also the... Uh, the uh, because there's not really a, a strong frame globally, and everybody somehow uh, not left on no, his own device, but no, uh, somehow, uh, yes, now you have. Mm. So that might be the, the, the secret of it. Uh, I have. Yeah, yeah, no, no, just that uh, we, we took the opportunity to share to all operations community uh, back in March 2019 mm. all this frame to the worldwide community of uh, top uh, operations and supply chain managers. Uh, so we, we, we had this, uh, this global vision uh, carried. Okay. Uh, what kind of decisions uh, take L'Oréal to limit uh, CO2 emissions in the supply chain transformation? Okay, so it's, uh, uh, we, we, we've not waited for the transformation program to start working very, very drastically on it. Uh, first, uh, 
well, when we started uh, the journey with uh, CO2 emission, it was back in 2005. We gave ourselves results and we set targets to ourselves in order to uh, to, to to lead to a, to a decrease of the CO2 emission. And we started first with, uh, okay, what do we uh, emit from the factories and the distribution centers? Okay, so that was the first. And the objective is to have uh, carbon neutral uh, factories and distribution centers, which is already the case for uh, many of them. Okay, so already we are on the on the journey. Obviously, uh, when it comes to CO2, it's a lot. Now it's a, what we, the second level of, of focus is about transportation. Okay, so how you distribute overseas uh, from the factories towards the towards the, the the subsidiaries. Okay, and then locally, uh, because as you understood, we do a lot of deep trade, in particular. So we ship. Uh, to uh, lots of customers and then uh, okay so first we we said okay we have to measure so we we now we've been measuring clearly uh, the co2 emission of our transportation on all the segments that, that i mentioned and now we have clearly uh, one of the strategies of the omnichannel network design pillar that i mentioned before is focusing on green transportation monitoring uh, you know limiting drastically air shipments uh, monitoring uh, CO2 with the last mile, uh, promoting all initiatives with uh, with uh, urban deliveries and with uh, green deliveries, uh, and uh, making a big big noise about it. So it's a uh, it's a very very uh, big focus today now for uh, specifically for transportation. Okay. So in fact, the transformation was not really. Uh, I mean, the objective was not to create new uh, new pillars, but uh, except for the supply chain segmentations with new models and also the end-to-end -end agility, but really to make sure that there was a, a focus on uh, aspects which was which were already existing in the end, including the, uh, the sustainability. Yeah, and the fact that we want to speed it up, because if you want to, for example, we identify probably more than 100 projects and initiatives that are transformational. Okay, if you, if you, if we just imagine if we were starting from scratch. Now, what we wanted to do is to make those initiatives, and that's why I'm going to just to, to scale them. Back, in fact, to scale to, to to scale them and to speed them. Some we we had to create them. Okay, for example, when I was mentioning demand sensing initiatives and some other initiatives, yeah, they are brand new, but some others are just okay. Let's speed up what we have been doing and let's uh, expose to a wider community uh, the results and the, 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 the direction where we want to go. And in particular uh, for uh, the, the, the CO2, there is a program at L'Oréal Group that is, that is well for sustainability overall that is called Sharing Beauty With All. This program is very dynamic and very powerful and is re recognized externally, you know, uh, for, for uh, by, by, by different uh, organism, organizations, uh, we just need to make sure that uh, we are on the right track and we go even further. Huh? For example, the next frontier for us huh, is to focus on the, uh, the supply chain uh, material, you know, and the, the, what we use in our supply chain to deliver our customers. Okay. So boxes, uh, the, you know, how you feel uh, the, the, the boxes, packaging the packaging, and, the, yeah. and so on, so all of that. Okay. Is a is an area of focus for us. So really, it's a, yeah. We we when we have a strong program, we don't want we don't have to reinvent, yeah. but we have to put it in, in the a form of consistency across the board to 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 make it more even more vocal. I think you've just answered the, one of the question, which was how is the supply chain transformation helping drive and accelerate sustainability goals? So that's typically what you just uh, mentioned. Uh, I think yeah you have to make sure that each in each pillar in fact you have uh, the sustainability taken on board that's why we put it at the you know sustainable development and we put growth but sustainability as well at the same level and and finance and you see in the outer circle of the transformation uh, sustainability so first focused on co2 uh, for supply chain but then little by little we are able to go uh, even further with uh, in particular waste uh, waste management we have already objectives okay but monitoring waste management at global level is not that easy it's very local today so but yes we we, we it's really each pillar has a role uh, and has some metrics associated with sustainability good okay. So it's a very uh, transversal vision. 
supply chain no compromise on that no compromise yeah, which, which is um, quite interesting to see it in a supply chain transformation program to make sure that uh, it's clearly indicated and there are kpis metrics mm. uh, which are um, uh, present and monitored um, next question is a uh, supply chain transformation is embarking into new areas where there's a need to build new capabilities like uh, in digital how did you go about building those um Digital is, uh, of course, is uh, when we very often I, I'm, 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 uh, I have to speak about uh, digital transformation. Uh, when we speak about transformation, we often think about uh, digital transformation, of course. Um, I will say that uh, one of the difficulties you, you, you have with digital is the fact that uh, it means a lot of things. It means nothing at the same time, meaning that uh, when you uh, you add um, you know uh, uh, a CRM system to uh, place orders, it's digital. Uh, EDI is digital, etc. So where do you uh, okay? Uh, where do you draw the line uh, between what is digital, what is uh, okay, uh, classical, and then accelerate accelerating on digital is of course it on, on the on the transformation journey. But then after the difficulties, with what? Because you have so many buzzwords with digital, so intelligence, artificial intelligence, automation in, in, in warehouses, RPA, blockchain, uh, IoT, and so on. So basically, what we do is that we've identified some priorities, OK? And I mentioned one of those. You can say today, priority is uh, demand sensing. So big data used to do a, a better uh, better forecasting, okay, and to anticipate the trends for uh, for the peaks of sales and troughs of sales as well, okay. So to anticipate as much as you as we can, knowing that at the other end there is a lot of digitization in the factories themselves, and to uh, also to boost uh, reactivity agility, so modern lines. Uh, digital printing, uh, 3D, uh, 3D printing for new products, and so on. So we, so we are not talking about automatization. It's really uh, advanced uh, new capabilities. In, uh, uh, in, in factories, it's uh, very often, it's already very kind of automatized, but uh, it's introducing little by little uh, new capabilities uh, around digital. Okay? Online, uh, we have automatic uh, guided vehicles in factories and so on. So digitalization is something a lot of... Uh, Local project, it's 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 now coming more and more with the distribution centers. We've got more and more robots, uh, more and more initiatives. We, you know, moving uh, shelves and that kind of Kiva robots that you know, and so on. So we've got more and more of that fully automatized distribution center. We have some of them, okay, but we we tend to believe that to combine all those different channels and uh, and types of uh, segments that we have to address, then we have to have a lot of uh, tactical, you know, robotization of some operation. And we have to have people very open-minded to, uh, to use it very cleverly. And network design is probably uh, to, come, uh, to come next uh, because it's a lot of data. So data is at the core of what we can do in terms of the digital. So the main challenge for us is to make sure that we have the right data. And to have the right data, you have to make sure that when you think of, I don't know, sellout, for example, data, you have to consider that sellout is understood the same way at all parts of the world in order to put that in the same uh, repository. Okay. And so the challenge is harmonization. And get the insights, uh, same level of insights. And then after, you can build the algorithm that will help you at exploiting the data. Yeah. Okay. But you have to make sure the data first is right. So for such organic transformation, did you get the support of uh, any consultants? Uh, we have, uh, let's say, a tactical support uh, of consulting. Uh, uh, when I say tactical, meaning that uh, we don't have a consultant uh, accompany, accompany, accompanying us uh, on, on the program. Okay, from the beginning uh, till the end, um, uh, it was a it was a, it was a clear choice at the beginning. Uh, we could have done uh, something differently, but we say that we want this program to be organic. 
we want the, this program to have the buy-in of the people who are actors in the supply and operations world. And okay. led driven internally. And then we said, okay, let's drive this internally because we do transform a lot of things and it's a lot of good sense that we have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, carry forward. But tactically, uh, we use some consultants and, uh, for example, I worked with B2G at some point. Who are those guys? <laughs> uh, in order to put together in particular, everything that has to do with uh, the, the structure of the program and the tools uh, and the discipline we can get from a complex organization uh, to help us at uh, initiating and get the ball rolling, let's say. Okay, I worked a bit with another consultant for, uh, for the segmentation, but uh, again, more to validate what we worked internally on and to make sure that is uh, closely in line uh, with uh, some market practices rather than having, you know, a sort of guided journey, uh, uh, step by step. 50, 50 uh, consultants. With, and no, it's, not, a, it's yeah. not that at all. Okay, perfect. Um, what are your key three takeaways out of this journey? And also, how did this experience uh, impact your life? Any personal insights? Um, well, takeaway, as I said, uh, Never take for granted that uh, because you have a vision, people understand it. So take away, repeat, repeat, repeat the vision. Uh, for me, that's uh, okay. That's that, that's clear. What seems obvious to the people who are part of the transformation, in fact, is not that obvious, and even for uh, the stakeholders of the transformation. So repeat, repeat. Um, don't. Let's not be. Let's not uh, distract ourselves from Shani uh, with. Uh, with shiny things, meaning that if you want to transform authentically, and in particular for a big company like, like, like ours, you have to consider, and that's why I was mentioning in digital, shiny things, you know, you will uh, jump onto the new uh, the new stuff, uh, all the new, uh, you know, buzz, the trend, uh, new buzz words, uh, yeah. exactly. But in fact, to do authentic and deep transformation, you have to cater for, you have to care for uh, foundations. You have to care for the quality of your foundations. And if you have to catch up in some areas, because in some areas it's okay, but some other areas, if you if it's not okay, then you have to catch up like mad. And it's not so glamour. I mean, in L'Oréal, not being glamour is uh, sometimes a challenge, but it's not so glamorous to uh, say, okay, let's work on those, on those data because the quality is crap and so on. Otherwise, you are not going to be able to scale it and to do it at, um, at, at scale. So that's, uh, for me, a key, key learning. Be very, let's be very uh, resilient and never, uh, never uh, release the grip uh, about this, those fundamentals. The discipline and uh, the quality of execution is something that I, uh, I learned a lot. Uh, the fact that, uh, yes, it works when you focus on that. There are lots of distractions as well in the company to say, OK, no, but OK, uh, uh, there are new things or, or uh, new, 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 new stuff coming, new products, uh, new, uh, new launches, uh, new, uh, new uh, acquisitions, new channels, new projects and so on, or new uh, buzzwords. No, no. Uh, Execu quality of execution is, is very key. And it's a long journey, in fact. We didn't mention how long the, this program was for, but it's, it's long. So I think, so I think we, 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 are, we, are, we are signing and to stay long, uh, we, yeah. to, to, to stay long and to, uh, to monitor that uh, over time, but, but also to make sure that, uh, uh, yes, we deploy global projects much more quickly than we, we, we do. Uh, today, a uh, standard uh, global project can last between five and ten years. Okay, uh, it's clear that it's not. Uh, we 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 can't afford having those timelines any any longer. So we uh, we are very much uh, drive driven by the the objective associated with this transformation to go quicker, to have the vision to go to a much quicker, um, and it works actually. It works because there is a drive behind. Okay, uh, and from a personal viewpoint, well. Maybe I, mentioned, I didn't mention it uh, that much, but what makes a difference are the, the, the people. Uh, and then uh, having this ability to uh, sit down all the time, to convince, uh, to, uh, uh, to share uh, the vision, to be, uh, uh, to mobilize, uh, to mobilize the people. And, and what, what surprised me is the fact that people, they are very open to, uh, to transforming, providing you associate them in building the, the vision. 
I think so, this is what, what you mentioned at the beginning. It's all about the vision, the mission, uh, and you started by that. Uh, so what is the mission of supply chain, the anytime, anywhere, which is the how uh, to uh, actually uh, realize the vision, the overall vision and mission of L'Oréal Group. Um, then there's a mission for the supply chain community. Once you get this mission clear, then people tend to, uh, to adopt it, to buy it uh, exactly. more easily than just talking about forecast accuracy, uh, inventory management. I mean, we are supply chain guys, so we love uh, those, uh, those terms, but uh, in the end, uh, it's not really uh, what uh, motivates uh, uh, people, in fact. Yeah. This morning, I had breakfast with uh, one colleague, uh, from uh, from Mexico, from Latin America, who, who is uh, uh, traveling here in in Paris uh, for a seminar, and uh, he told me the, the the vision is fully shared and it's very uh, well received and very very useful for the team because they say at, at last we have you know something that we and from a very because when you are in the head office, okay, it's okay you got the impression that everything is obvious that it's clear and so on, but when you are at the at the, at the other uh, end of the world, it's not that uh, not that easy. So having this shared vision uh, for a country uh, uh, from one part of the world to another for all functions is something that uh, really makes a difference. Yeah, perfect. So I have to thank you a lot, Jean Francois, for your insights. Um, thank you, guys. We can uh, we can continue the discussion uh, online. Uh, also, so you can um, go on B two G social media on LinkedIn, for example, and post your comments. And we'll make sure that uh, we get your answer, your questions uh, answered. Uh, thank you, and uh, see you by now. Thank you. Bye bye.